Hi there, uh, it's Richard White here again for the Photographer Academy. I just wanted to give you a bit of a brief rundown on a 5.4 camera, which I know a lot of um, people who are new to photography, especially digital, are uh, not familiar with these sorts of cameras. It's, um, this one is an ebony camera. It's uh, pretty well based on an old style of camera. Uh, that was developed really around the time that photography was um, introduced to the world. It's got some great movements. This is a triple bellows, so depending on the lens you have, you can bring the bellows right, right out to get focus, or you can take it right back uh, with a wide-angle lens. Uh, it's got great movements. You can, if I loosen that off, you can swing the lens if you've got a, say you're shooting down a picket fence for example, you can twist the lens like that which effectively you can focus the front and the back of the, of the fence, have them both sharp and everything in between sharp and you can use effectively any aperture you like. Uh, so the swing's useful, I don't use it all that much. I do use the, um, the tilt which is loosening these guys off so effectively what you do is focus on the, the front part of the, the image, the foreground, tilt the lens until the background becomes sharp and then just make some small adjustments and again you can use any aperture you, uh, you choose and that uh, I use that quite a bit. It's also got um, uh, a rise and fall which I uh, have used, might use it today, later tomorrow uh, we'll see, but that's useful when you're focusing certainly buildings or anything that um, has you want to keep the, the your verticals uh, vertical and not have them converge. And by keeping the film plane parallel with the subject matter, you can just raise the lens if you need to get more height, and it uh, allows you to do so with that con uh, without that convergence. Uh, it's got also on the back you can um, you can do effectively the same as you can do on the front. You can swing the back, you can tilt the back, so it's uh, it duplicates everything. It's it's terrific. You don't have to um, you don't have to think about uh, whether everything will be sharp or not. You can't do HDR on this, but hey, it's old school technology. I use um, Graphmatics. Uh, for my film, which looked like looked like this, <clears throat> it's just a pull push pull mechanism that holds six sheets of film, and it's very handy certainly when you're travelling. Uh, what else can I tell you? I guess you um, when you're focusing on something, you have to open the lens wide up to this particular lens, which is a 210. You open it up to 5.6, which makes everything really bright. And then once you've determined where your uh, exposure and where your setting is, you close the lens down just by rotating that lever, set your speed, cock the shutter, close the lens off, and take a shot. And it's uh, quite simple. It's straightforward. No moving, the well, no, no electronic moving parts, only um, only all mechanical, so battery's not an issue. To focus these cameras, uh, it's usually done on the side here, so you can focus on the back and on the front. It, um, it's critical using that, uh, that loop that I have used today, and you pop that onto the ground glass at the back here. I should point out the image that you will see here, because it's coming directly from the lens, uh, it will be, the actual image will be upside down and also back to front. So it's a little disconcerting the first few times you do it, but after a while you get used to it. The beauty I think of having it upside down certainly is you often see a lot of uh, mistakes that are within your composition and they don't seem as evident when you're looking at the picture as you see it um, straight on, you know, with your own eyesight or even through a, uh, a little digital camera because you're seeing everything correctly. But by turning it upside down, 
uh, if there's a hot spot somewhere that you don't quite notice, it's really very evident uh, on the ground glass. And that's something I do in the dark room too, that if I am unsure about a picture, I'll turn it upside down and, and often the, the bad parts in the shot will, will glare at you. That's the beauty of the ground glass. These markings you might see here are all to do with um, uh, just something I've put on there for my tilting and swinging and so forth, giving me a, a line. Lenses, um, I've got a variety of lenses. Uh, this, uh, as I mentioned, is a 210. It's a short telephoto, probably the equivalent of an 85 on a 35mm camera. I have um, in 5.4 in terminology, I, I have a 75, a 90, a 105, a 150, a 210, 300, 360 and a 500. Uh, the 360 and the 500 is a, uh, it's a Nikkor telephoto, so you take the back off and put a different back on it and it changes the, um, the range. I, because I've got a 300, I tend to use that uh, or the 500 and if I want to crop in, I'll crop in for the, um, for the 300 rather than carrying around something else because when you weigh all of this, uh, it's probably up to 12 kilos or more and if you're going on a bit of a hike somewhere, uh, by the end of the day, you're pretty knackered. People have um, often asked me, uh, because I teach workshops, and a lot of the people who come to a workshop have got digital cameras and often the latest ones, and they ask, why do I persist in using such a, such a beast that obviously slows you down and, and uh, you can't react as quickly as you can with a, a small point and shoot type of camera? Why do I still use it? Um, I do still like the film format and certainly in black and white. I, I'm not convinced and I've not seen great black and white with digital conversion. And I think you get uh, certainly richer blacks um, through film and, and, and good darkroom printing, I guess it's fair to say. Uh, I think a lot of people gave up the darkroom because it was too difficult and, and consequently gave up photography with the advent of digital of course which has made everything really a lot easier then uh, it's brought people back to the medium and it's also given them that flexibility of shooting color and black and white but but I like to think when I shoot black and white that I actually know that I'm going to take the picture in black and white rather than second guessing it rather than getting home later and say, I wonder if this will work in black and white. I like to uh, hopefully know that it will work before I actually take the picture. And you might have heard the, the saying about pre-visualization and it's, it's sort of taking, ta taking the scene that you're composed on and translating the colors that are in that scene into shades or tones of gray. So if you know the green grass comes up at about a zone five or a middle gray, and that red will also do the same thing and they're lying side by side, you know that you're not gonna, gonna get much shading there or much contrast, where in color it's really strong, um, but in black and white it isn't. So you, you have to, it's not that you avoid that, you, you just look differently, you, you look for different kinds of pictures. And why do I keep using it? I'm not sure if I answered that in all of that, but uh, why? Because uh, I suppose part of me is stubborn. Um, I love the negative. I still like to print. I like the size neg that it gives and the quality that it gives because to enlarge a 4x5 up to an 8x10 image, for example, is really only four times. If you compare 35 mil enlargements, it's, I've got no idea, but I know it's more than four. It's something like uh, 16 or 24 or some high number. So of course you're going to um, decrease the quality of the image if, if you were comparing it to film. I think digital technology with, um, with the high megapixel cameras has um, certainly improved that. Uh, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, I'm comfortable with this. And, and really, when it comes down to it, if you don't like the picture I take on this, 
or the picture, picture I take on a digital camera, you're not going to worry what I've used. If you don't like the picture, that's it. And I find that, you know, if you show a shot to somebody and they go, oh, I really like that, they then don't ask, gee, what sort of camera was that taken on? It, it's not even, a, it's, it's irrelevant, really. It's whether you like the image that it comes from here and I guess comes from the heart as well. And, and that's the basis of photography. I think photography is all about vision and, and about how we respond to what we see in front of us. So I guess that answers why I <laughs> still use this camera. I'm comfortable with it, I like it. And apart from that, I just like to look at it. It's kind of cute. Um, this little Fuji X-E1 is something I've had for uh, nearly a year now. And I use this for a couple of reasons. I use it for colour shots when, when I obviously don't see a black and white. I also use it as uh, what I call my Polaroid. So if I come across a scene, I can turn this on, I can frame it up and I can look and say, is this working as an image before I get um, the beast out here. So that's why I use that. The, the other th reason I really chose the, the Fuji X-E1 is the quality it delivers uh, in, in its imagery. I used to have a, a Canon uh, G12 and I remember enlarging a, a picture once and just having it break down and fall down. It just disappointed me so much. So I um, then obtained one of these guys uh, and when you enlarge this, I can get, you know, really quite big pictures. So I'm not disappointed if I end up with a, with a terrific shot. It's, uh, it's handy for, it's handy for everything really. It, I guess, not talking about the Fuji, but it's, it's a good camera for landscapes. It's not a good camera for action. It's just a bit slow on that, that side of it. But for how I use it with, um, with, as a compositional tool, it's, uh, it's terrific. So I just carry this everywhere with me and, uh, and use it where necessary. If I feel I'm going to do a black and white picture on this camera, then I more than likely will not take one on this because often I find if you take a color and you take a black and white, you get a bit confused with which one is better. So I tend not to, uh, not to take it. I just use it for a composition, but compositional tool for, for this guy. Uh, but when it's a colour shot, then I just use this one and it's perfect for that. It's got, you know, lots of variation and you can change lots of things. And it's kind of retro in, in a sense. I like the idea you can turn the aperture and do all of that stuff and dials on the top. You know, taking me back to my early days in photography. <laughs>